I don't think we've signed anything yet. Oh, I know. Okay. So there's there's the site plan that was submitted for the planning commission review and approval. And, you know, so there's that copy there, which we have digitally. Okay. Um, so that so then, I wouldn't have gotten a signed copy of that. No, I don't think oh, so. Okay. We, well, we haven't done that. that. I, I do okay. have I do have a stamp and I, I think we've we've done that at some points in time and we could if you wanted. Um, so the builder just needs to submit for site plan permit. And yes. So as per usual. And what, whatever site plan is submitted you know, for the zoning hi. approval, I'm How just going to compare that Good. site plan to the site plan Good. that was submitted and approved by the planning. Hard to do that on the day. Like as as so I just turn in my site yeah, plan. Yeah, no rain. As usual. Sunny. You can turn it in. Yeah, as yeah usual. That's, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Keep well. Well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's smiling. So they're going to start pretty soon, or? Oh, uh, you know, I think they'll probably wait till everybody goes home at later yeah. day and gets quiet. Yeah. I mean, I think that was the real reason they didn't want to start last year was they knew they'd be going into the summer and didn't want angry neighbors for the next 20 years. So. Right. Well, everybody gets upset with their neighbor when they want to do a project. But then three or four years later, they do a project of their own. Exactly. It, it, it inevitably happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. How was lunch, Al? Pardon me? How was lunch? <laughs> it delicious. I thought it was really good. Actually. He did a good job. Yeah. He usually does. I find myself stopping there more frequently. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are you guys talking about? Oh, uh, I went to the first gas station. Oh. I can't remember the name of it. And they had Reuben sandwiches today. And while I was in line getting a Reuben, so was Al. Mm -hmm. so, um, it's either there or the IGA. Yeah. yeah. I miss the Leckies. Do you remember that place? Nice. Right. Where? The Leckies. Right. Do you remember the deli that was up by Happy Plus? Well yes. Right. That's you right. some skills it's been a while. That's a short term. Years. Yeah. They, they were good. How are you? No, of course. Yeah. 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 Two days in a row, you got to be here. You were very new. I think so. Somebody said plus one. Somebody said please RSVP. Really? Uh, plus one. <laughs> Jeff and I were like, sure. Who's okay. coming? <laughs> I've been talking to those brands. We're like, why? Right, right, right. 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 The figures they hear me talk to the planning. So, yeah. It's a bit of a bladder. It's in the neighborhood. It's in the tree circle. Yeah, yeah. those are trees. Yeah, those are trees. Take this one. Take mine out. Yeah, it's just an issue. Sure is. It's really nice in there. <laughs> yeah, so Hi, Emily. What's the answer? Another. Find it, find it, find it. It's what's happening here. He's got something going on. Okay. Should be coming out. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, wow. Being stuck in traffic to text. Did he? Yeah. Oh, he uh, he's headed here. I could have said that down for like three minutes ago. I know. <laughs> I saw him set down. We got to offset our meetings. Oh, no, I love that comment. Uh, yeah, but here's the Yeah, and I told you. Well, I've spent some time at the It's so nice out here. Yeah, it's just getting out. Jack? Uh, he, he thinks it's not as it's hard. Not as Dana does too. 
this year? No, I thought Fourth of July was nice. It wasn't. He like said it was doubled up for the year. Right? You know, I was afraid it would be yeah. like make up year, and it seemed. Yeah. So it's good. Well, the line of cars going through Petoskey yeah. is just as long yeah, as it ever has been. You can't turn left at 119 anywhere between 130 and 5. I just go straight and go up Thicker Lake Road and turn left. Yeah. I like the people trying to head south but try to turn left into like public culvers. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's a nightmare. Yeah. And they're, their eyes are usually not that big. <laughs> they realize they've made a horrible, horrible mistake. <laughs> I saw yeah. three of them lined up today. Yeah, three of them right in a row in the 119, like not even in the turn lane yet. Things were all the way back to up to DW. Yeah. Or the or the line of cars waiting to turn left to go up Division Hill, and it's all the way back yeah. through the light of D and W. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But well, I think safety there is the red light in Bayview. Mm -hmm. And that allows a big slug to go through. Yeah. yeah. But that's your only chance there. Now it's time to go like backwards. Yeah, way, <laughs> way out. Yeah. It's Wolverine on the way. <laughs> My back will go to Montana. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got one and minute. Then, and are we reminding you? Sorry, are we? Uh, yeah, we're recording. We're, we're recording, zooming. but not. We're Zoom. We're Zoom and on YouTube. Oh, yeah, you in. I just sit there. Please we'll take public participation from that Zoom and YouTube, but prefer to Zoom. Like okay, I think. I just, if I forget to ask. I'll let you. I don't think I see anyone on. Okay. Plug in and tell somebody what the first button is. Yeah. So, but I'll let you know. All right. I think it's close right. enough to 5.30. Call the meeting to order. No. One minute. Is it one minute on Apple, Apple time? time? Uh oh. Apple time, 5.29. I was, I was trying to use the <coughs> awful old classroom. 5.29. 15 seconds. Right. Right. <laughs> it says it would be interesting if this changed at the same time. Yeah, I could. Yeah. Well, now you're late. Oh. All right. <laughs> now it's 5.30. Ready for the roll? Yes, please. All right. Beth for Holly. Here. Mary Catherine Hanna. Here. Emily Dubay. Here. Jack Deegan is not here yet. George Pete is absent. Bill Mulder. Here. Mark Bidet. He's here. He's here. Here's, he's there. Uh, Andrew Bowman. Here. Al Dyke. Here. Uh, that mm -hmm. is seven. We have a form. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Moving on to the minutes of the June seventeenth uh, meeting. Does anybody have any comments or corrections on the minutes? There were definitely a couple of typos <coughs> that, and now I I can't pull. I can't see if I can pull it up. Victor's name. Was yeah, Victor's name was one of them, and there was another one. one where it was a similar kind of thing, where it was just clearly a a. Um, We can certainly give it another perusal and fix any of those before we. Um, well, there's one misspelling. So I'll go back. Where's that? <laughs> right at the beginning. No, it's further down. There's one on Victor's name. Yeah. Page, is it page three? <coughs> so it's, uh, I have to admit, I don't know how to spell your name, so I'm not very good at proofing. <laughs> <laughs> Looks you have a name there, there it is at the bottom. Dinowski. Dinowski. Right above, right above, right above the bottom of the page. Very right. That's like, well, it's right on the screen behind you. It's Last line. Yeah. It says Dinowski. Oh, you just didn't write it. It just didn't get oh. all the way up. <laughs> right at the very end. They call me back in the day. Can you just put an apostrophe in front of the D? <laughs> That's right. Just, yeah. Dinowski. I accidentally made you Italian. Yes. Okay, so with the comment of some just general editing, any other corrections for the minutes? We have a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Support. Second. That was second. a motion by Al and seconded by Mark. Yep. And we don't need to do roll calls on these ones. Mark. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Public comment and correspondence. Any comment from the public uh, for something that's not on the, tonight's agenda? 
Uh, hearing on the room, any on uh, YouTube? Okay. Moving on to new and old business. Uh, special land use extension 413 Glen Drive. We have a chance to sort of read Jessica's scroll to it letter. Um, yeah. <coughs> uh, any questions or comments on the site plan? Is anybody not here when this was approved originally? Did have any questions? On? I wasn't. Okay. No questions. Yeah, this is a pretty straightforward thing. It was a special land use request and a two-story accessory building request for a garage with guest quarters above on Glen Drive. Um, and they pretty succinctly stated in their letter that due to COVID restrictions and timing, that they weren't able to start the project within the time frame. And our time frame for the start of anything that the Planning Commission approves is one year from the date when we initially approve it. So it was about this time last year when we approved it. So they can come in and ask for a one year extension unless you have any concerns with the project. And there are no changes being made, and it was a unanimous decision, I think, to approve it the first time. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. Anyone have any comments or questions? Okay. Hearing none, do we have a motion? I make the motion we extend. Support. I'll support. Let's go ahead and do a roll call vote just for the drama. Sure. Um, Bill Mulder. Yes. Mark Bidet. Yes. Andrew Bowman. Yes. Al Dyka. Yes. Beth Rahali. Yes. Mary Catherine Hanna. Yes. Emily Dubay. Yes. Uh, that's a consensus motion. Thank you very much. Clara Lucas. as dramatically. As you expect, no, it's too quick. We just got to slow the names down. No, we're trying. We can almost be done before Jack gets here. Make him absent. We don't have short chain Bill's hard work. So, uh, discussion, housing, uh, public input, session update. Very uh, helpful uh, summary, and then it was are the housing strategies uh, outlined that Bill had provided, and then I'll probably just let Bill take it from here. That's okay. Yeah. All right, uh, we held the public input uh, session on housing strategies that you all helped um, formulate. And um, it was uh, attended, I'd say we have about 10 people who were not planning commission or city or you know, other folks. And um, the, uh, my takeaway was that the format worked uh, very well. People were engaged and interested. It was uh, a lot of two-way, dialogue and it was help that was really helpful to talk about more complex issues uh, mary catherine gave a uh, great introduction and set the set the level for everybody and then andrew uh, told uh, the audience all about the planning commission and what we do and so that that was useful and um, the um, the mood was good and productive and uh the crowd was uh, really interested. There were a number of people from outside the city limits too, who were interested in the topic just for the area in general. And um, some of the ma uh, main takeaways, you know, we focused them on four, our four key questions. And, you know, we asked what's their perception about the availability uh, and cost of housing in the area and uh, asked for personal stories. And almost everybody had a story, you know, about a, a relative or a friend or an acquaintance that just couldn't find a place to live you know, uh, at any price. And uh, that led us into, you know, uh, talking about should it be a city goal to have um, housing for all income levels, all stages of life, and um, uh, I guess, and family sizes. So that was the million dollar question Hello, uh, that, we, that we really wanted to focus on. And people were uh, very strongly in support of saying, yep, we, did, we do need housing. Uh, in the city for people of all types. And we explored uh, whether or not uh, it makes sense for the city of Harbor Springs to have this as an objective or isn't it better just to solve it somewhere else? We pressed them pretty hard on that and people would not, they would not go for that. They said, no, uh, we need to have, the city needs to set an example and take action in our own jurisdiction. So that was good. We uh, then drilled in on uh, whether or not we should make a, a goal to specifically seek to attract younger people 
And uh, they said, no, that didn't warrant being a separate goal, that it was really covered in the first goal, which is you know, to have housing available for people at all age ranges. Um, and then the third question was, um, or the fourth question then was uh, the most detailed, and we took people through some different types of housing and uh, got their reactions specifically on each one of those, you know, starting with smaller homes and moving up to you know, some different strategies. And um, the, I'd say the key takeaway for me from that is that there was very strong support for the idea of allowing smaller homes. And uh, there were a number of people in the audience who said, I would love to live in a place like that if there was something available you know, at a reasonable price you know, and it was well done. And uh, they, people acknowledged that family sizes are getting smaller and that um, you know, even if it looks like there's more density in a neighborhood, that may not actually be true anymore in terms of the number of people you know, now in a dwelling unit. But there were cautions. People said, you know, really, it would have to be well done. It would have to be you know, not shabby and um, you know, we have to be pleasant. Uh, another one was the long-term uh, rental of accessory dwelling units. And uh, that actually got the most favorable reaction, I thought. And uh, people, in fact, the reaction was, well, you know, why don't we just do that? I mean, you know, if that could be something that brings some housing units on the market quickly, you know, I, you know, we, we think you ought to do that. So we took that under advisement and, um, you know, said that we're going to be reporting that back here as well. Cottage courts, the concept was pretty well received as well. Um, tiny homes were uh, attractive, but, you know, in the right place, they said, and they couldn't be on wheels. It would have to, again, be really well done. So um, as we're going into these next things, there's like waning, you know, enthusiasm. Duplexes actually got uh, a pretty fair reception as well. People thought that if duplexes were well done, it could be a way to be, you know, have more efficient housing and more uh, availability. Um, so that was good. Fourplexes, that's when we started really getting a lot of pushback. People said, no, feels too big. Not, uh, you know, it's not what we need here or want here. And um, multiplexes, they really didn't like that idea. And then uh, rooming houses were, uh, you know, red hot. It was a red hot poker. And uh, people uh, did not want that at all. So we just, you know, in the master plan, you know, how much of this specific housing types we need to address, you know, it may not be in a master plan, or it may be, you know, we may reference it in there, but it did at least keep, let us take a temperature check of, you know, the people who cared enough to come to this meeting and engage. Yes. So for folks who were there or watched it, anybody else have any impressions or takeaways? No, I mean, I would say, I think my recollection of the rooming house discussion wasn't quite as, as stark as the way you're framing it it was that definitely concern about it definitely yeah. wanting to you know be very cautious about it but that some version of it might be acceptable but we would have to really think through what that would be like and i think that was i agree that you know, it was definitely <clears throat> the point where you could tell it got it got quieter and, and people were more sort of squirming not squirming their chairs but just sort of had their heads tilted a little bit. And I think it was the idea, um, maybe there was some nuance to it where it was a, a rooming house where the owner lived there mm -hmm. and rented rooms versus just a boarding house where there was no, you know, not supervision, yeah. no yeah. owner on site yeah. type of thing. And I feel like there was some distinction there, but it was definitely the one where, and really anything kind of above fourplex sort of that looked like a residential home seemed to get some nods and then 12 and beyond that really you're right it sort of fell off at that point but you know the one that sort of resonated with me and i, I don't i don't haven't formed my own opinion completely as to whether it, it's a good idea but I, i'm open to it is you know, kind of like when we were bringing the farmer's market downtown and doing some other things even during covid where it was you know let's try it because it's relatively there's no capital cost to the city it's reversible and it's and it's quick and, and not quick in that it's a fast decision, but it, it would it would potentially do something pretty major in a relatively short amount of time, as opposed to waiting for a whole building cycle of bringing projects online. And that was the renting of an accessory quarters on a long term basis. Uh, there was I didn't feel there was any support, nor did we ask 
I don't think the question was even asked, are you in favor of short-term rental no. accessory living quarters? That was just sort of not even on the table. So it was, you know, again, it was a small sample size of people, but I feel like they were, you know, sort of a, a fairly broad uh, base, um, some inside the city, some outside the city, and there wasn't a huge resistance to the idea of at least exploring what, what would the rules of the road be if you were to rent uh, accessory living quarters long-term. <clears throat> and I think a majority of the people that have those probably wouldn't opt for that, but you might add six or eight living quarters, you know, that you might really be replacing ones that have been grandfathered out, torn down, and, and no longer a rental. So that was just an idea I was open to at the end of that. Well, you mentioned um, uh, something caught my uh, recollection. There was a audience member who said she used to live in Greenwich or somewhere in Connecticut. She said, you know, it was just wickedly expensive. And, yeah. you know, um, older people were, probably going to have to give up their homes because they just couldn't afford to keep them anymore. And they uh, allowed people to rent a room to a non-family member in their home um, if that works with their lifestyle. And she said that actually allowed a number of residents to be able to keep their keep their homes and get some extra income and get some help around the house. So it was kind of interesting. Yeah. Anything given some of our generational and issues or stuff that's going on in terms of demographics and who's living here that seems like something that's worth exploring mm -hmm. what's the phrase retired not retired but agent place agent community agent. now yeah. is the new uh, place. Agent community. I knew because I was, there might I knew I was the place that you five. live might not be right but you want to stay in your community okay. so yes. agent community. not literally in place i may move but in your but see where your supports are where your doctors are where your yes I would say that the meeting was good, as Bill said, good two-way conversation. Um, fortunately, you only had a, you know, less than a dozen people show up, so it's not really reflective of the whole community. But again, to say that, it didn't really differ that much from the survey results on a grand scheme of things. It got more detailed, the survey results, but in the survey results, there was that same kind of opposition to like the multiplexes and the fourplexes, but more, more support for some of these other ideas, such as this smaller lot, smaller homes, single family homes, and um, so I don't think overall it was anything earth shattering that we learned, uh, but it was, I think we were able to dive in more in details, which was important. I think one thing from a formatting standpoint that I wouldn't guess going into it, but it's one of those where we've all stared at it so long, probably when they just sort of, you threw up the question of, well, should we bring in, make a concerted effort to bring in younger people? And it's not, they weren't against that idea at all. They just said, well, isn't that in your first go over like oh yeah right so i mean that may be a, that i thought that was from, from a formatting standpoint something that actually came out of it that was pretty pretty easy to figure out once they told us <laughs> it's already in there i guess there was a lot of talk about it there was a lot of talk about younger families in the schools and yeah. you know that kind of stuff but you know so it would be more that that would be something that would be a strategy under that overarching goal rather than that's yeah. standalone. Any questions from anybody that wasn't there no, your report was great. You know, very nicely done. And I thought Kate did a really nice follow-up. Yeah, that yeah, um, was good. I thought it was interesting that we didn't get any um, opposing uh, people here. It was publicized enough, and if, it seems like if there was a lot of um, negativity, someone <coughs> would have showed up. Yeah. But Agreed. everyone there was very positive about it. I was idea. asked about it by a couple of people, but that's a good point. Even the ones that couldn't make it or didn't have, but usually, it, or a lot of times the negative comments are not necessarily people who are inclined to, to come and speak publicly. And I didn't get anybody stopping me on the street. What are you guys thinking? What are you talking about? No, I mean, obviously, the, you know, the, the saw it's in the pudding, but uh, when an actual project shows up. And... Yeah, I mean, specific, <laughs> specific changes but, yes. will certainly, but that's good. At least we're not getting the message that, hey, you're way off base. And well, I think the negativity cool. that we've all heard from most of us is about short-term rentals when so, it comes to housing issues. So yeah. people avoided this because there was not going to be a talk about short-term rentals. So Yeah, the um, there had been uh, a number of appearances at the council recently of folks who wanted to talk about short-term rentals and yeah. demanded immediate action. And um, so that brings us to the next question is, um, uh, we took short-term rentals totally out of the equation for this meeting to try to keep it focused and productive. And uh, I did reference that you know, we would consider having one in the future on short-term rentals on that topic specifically. 
So the question I'd like to bring to this group is, should we go ahead and do that using this format that we've now tested? And uh, let's, you know, let's air it out. I think um, this is gonna be a much more productive approach than a council meeting, which is very structured one way, you know, people stand up and speak for their three minutes of, you know, the council members just have to listen to it. They can't even really engage. So um, I think it would help the community if we got this out on the table and had a chance to really talk it through. And I think this format would let us do that. So. To add to that briefly, I have had a number of people come in to visit me since then, asking me when the next meeting, that they had heard that there was going to okay. be a meeting about short-term rentals and wanting to know when that date was. So I think there is, you know, people from the community coming in and asking about that, that, that shows an interest. So. I'll throw one caveat out there. I've been communicating with uh, John DeMoose about when this bill is gonna be, and you know, it seems like you know, they're about to put it on the floor for a vote and then they don't do it. So like they've been kind of been delaying and pushing it off. So there might be just that caveat that we set up a meeting date and then Assuming the legislature, yeah. So that's, that, that's just a, the caveat that we'd have to let people know is that we might have 30 people show up and they'd be like, sorry, we can't do anything. That's just the nature of the beast. But well, I mean, honestly, we could still have a discussion. Right, it but, just might yeah. be with the, hey, the legislature's taking this right. off the table for us, but yeah. it's still great to get your feedback because um, there's nothing that says they couldn't. Yeah. Because it could still be a goal in the master plan to um, work regionally to address the issues that are, arise from short-term rentals, you know, and they continue press, pressing the state to make change if that if it ends up passing. So anyway, just it's How good. How do they feel? Does he think it will pass or won't pass? <coughs> he thinks if it goes to a vote that it would pass. Really? Um, and can no, explain? That's, that would take away local control. Explain yeah. exactly what that would mean now. That would take away a local municipality's ability to regulate short-term rentals differently in any than way. Any, differently than we regulate other housing. So we can still address the nuisance and all that, but we can't have a, a registration, like a licensing program. We can't, if they're, can't take them out of the zoning. It's a by right use, essentially. It'd be a by right use to have your house. Ours, I mean, our zoning code probably doesn't go as far as some, some of the ones who put in like a 30 day minimum. I mean, there are certain things that they would, that, you know, cities that have gone further. Well, Petoskey's banned them from anywhere but the commercial district. So they would have to allow them now. And, and so if, if that were to so Exactly. We'd have to change some things, but not nearly as much. We'd probably just stop our licensing program. Well, and specifically wording, and I know that John has been working on Different wording. different wording, but the wording that's in the bill right now specifically states because there have been some in various different states uh, court cases that have stated that short term rental use of property is a commercial use of property. Right. So one of the uh, bits of language in there it would state that it would now be viewed as a residential use of property. Right. And then other language that's in there specifically is that that use of property would be a by right use of a property owner. So by right use for us, you know, we've got single family occupancy is a by right use um, as opposed to special land uses or licensed uses. So it, it limits our ability to be able to, you know, if somebody wants to do a short term rental, you know, if we had it as a special land use requirement, like our guest quarters, we can have them come into the you know, planning commission and have a discussion about ways to mitigate negative impact on neighboring properties. When it becomes a by right use, you lose that ability. So, I'm, you know, I feel like there's a lot of uh, demand to talk about this as a community. And, um, I, you know, we're poised. I think we can do it in August. And I think we could catch, you know, some seasonal residents while they're here. And uh, we could catch our full time residents and even some folks who are running, you know, who have to be in town. So I think we could do it. I think this format works. And um, so I'd like to ask for your concurrence to go ahead and uh, tee this thing up for August. And I, we looked at a couple of dates and uh, 17th or the 24th uh, could be feasible. Uh, those are Tuesday nights again. And um, does anybody have any feelings about the concept or the timing on this? Um, if you want to do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to you know, participate. Well, you did most of the you know, lion's share of the work, so I mean, I, I would be happy to be on the, on the subcommittee okay. again if you wanted me to, and I'm also happy to step aside if you want to rotate people through. Probably, but 
and maybe go on the 17th, but that's um, up yeah. in the air based. Um, okay. And for me, it's better towards the end of the month. Okay. Just doesn't really matter. All right, I think this would really help council too. Like they've, they've been taking a lot of heat and they can't even, you know, if I think if we do anything, planning commission ought to lead that and I think it would be for council so they don't have to start from scratch. And I think it would also be a good opportunity. We may know a little more about this vote, or at yeah. least let people who may not be aware of the fact that Lansing is contemplating this. That, you know, we'll do the best we can within the confines of the rules set by the state, but you may want to contact people who are, are pushing this. Uh, and it, as Victor said, you can still put it in the master plan that we would like to regulate it or you know, manage it best we can. Yeah. And if the rules change in four years or eight years, then you know, it's still a goal. So, okay. And by the end of August, early September, we'll have a more clear picture of exactly how many short-term rentals we have in the city. Because we're going to our second round now of letters to people that we missed in the first round of the winter. So I think we're up to 47. As we have, of Yeah, June. we have 47 applications that we've processed and that are you know that have licenses we miss some, which is the second round is going to do yeah yeah we, we think that there's probably more people that have advertised since the last time we did this we we found um, approximately 30 homes that were on our registry list last summer that haven't renewed this year you know some of them may not have continued to do it some of them may have just forgotten to apply uh, but they're getting ready to do their next, and so we'll see what, what we come up with at a time around. All right, then do we have the concurrence of the Planning Commission to go ahead and hold another one? Yeah. yeah. We don't need a motion to do set yeah. that subcommittee. Uh, consensus is fine. Great. Great. Thanks, Bill. Uh, let's see. I can do this also. Member comments? There we go. I mean, I can just give everyone, since we're on the topic of housing, a quick update from the Little Traverse Bay Housing Partnership. For those of you who may or may not know, the county is actually planning a housing session in August um, because the county is trying to kind of get their arms around what <clears throat> the different townships and municipalities in the county are working on in terms of housing. Um, it's been a little bit frustrating because Little Traverse Bay Housing Partnership had been planning a session to get all the units of government together to talk about it, and then the county planned theirs, so we stepped back <laughs> and um, are just working on really participating in the county. Um, there is a movement uh, supported by the Little Traverse Bay Housing Partnership to put forward to the county the potential for a county housing authority. Um, which mostly would just give the opportunity for the county to um, pull together a bunch of different things, mostly around things like Brownfield um, and um, the, when your property falls to the county, land, bank. land bank, thank you. I knew that somebody would come up with it for me. It's been a long day. Um, between the land bank authority and Brownfield authority um, gives some better ability to coordinate through there and to do some different things with tax abatements and stuff like that. If, if they were interested and willing to go down that path. Um, the Little Terrace Bay Housing Partnership did get the, all of the funding it needed to go to a full-time position um, for the housing coordinator that position has been posted it's the we just agreed to extend the deadline to next friday for applications we do have some applications in so we'll be looking at those pretty quickly um, the state of michigan did just release their list of projects um, that were funded through the litec there were two projects in petoskey that were up for potential litec funding one was victory the victory square um, the tribe and the other was the lofts at lumber square young lofts at lumber yes the lofts at lumber square um and the victories project actually did get funded which is awesome and amazing but that of course meant the loss did not it was very unlikely that they were going to get two projects from petoskey through the litec funding mm -hmm. project i will say it's very disappointing there were only two rural projects that were funded this round in the whole state in the whole state one up in the sioux and the one in petoskey and that was it and they they have just made the scoring criteria harder for rural projects to get through litec funding um, which is one of the very few funding mechanisms for um, affordable low income housing. Um, so 
that's very exciting. That's 50 units um, up where they're developing, you know, up there behind where the old uh, bowling alley used to be. So, um, and that's going to be multifamily um, LIHTC housing. So it's going to be a mix of market rate and um, uh, income driven uh, qualifications to live there. So, I mean, that's cool. Yay. <laughs> um, the Mantis are taking a big project to um, the township for approval later this month. That could be as many as 200 lots, um, which is really exciting. I don't know how in the heck they're going to figure out how to make all those affordable, but they're working on it. Um, they're working on different manufactured home possibilities for in there. Um, so that is Plus cool. infrastructure is going to be. They, they, they think they have all that taken care of. The only infrastructure issue that they still have outstanding is that there is a giant, um, there's a power line that literally runs like right through the property that they would really love to bury. Where is the property? It's, um, I'm not going to say it right. It's off of, um, it's off of 131, um, kind of up behind um, the, um, it's an old gravel pit. Um, South Tesco. No, north. Um, north, just north of, just north of the, you know, the 31, 131 intersection off of Pickerel Lake Road. Oh. Yeah. Oh, they, oh, yeah, there is a behind the Plotchman Industrial Park. Yes, area. yes. And then one of the accesses to it is off of the industrial park. Um, and then it dumps right off into 3131 there. Um, and there's like a pond, or they're going to make a pond. <laughs> it's going to be McDonald's there. every time it rains, so that should be too hard. Yes, yeah. exactly. So. Um, so there is some stuff that's starting to happen in the realm of housing in the larger region, which is good. As we know, these things take forever to come to fruition. So just... I just think about the task of sewage capacity, because I know they've been running tight. They've borrowed from us from time to time. And they, didn't treat, they couldn't treat 200 on site. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. They might, they might. They, they, they're they're going to need to expand their sewage treatment plant. And they certainly don't want to do it where it is now. No, they're, they're well, I'm, I'm sure the, the Manti one is off of uh, septic. I mean, I, there's no way that ties into the toxic. Okay. Any other comments or? Members, or well, I just had a question for Jeff. Jeff, are you uh, in terms of uh, trend spotting? Um, you mentioned you're getting a lot of calls on the short term housing question. What else are you seeing? What, what are people talking about? What are they requesting? Beautification, I think you know that's something that's been big. Uh, you know, this time of year leading into summer, I get a lot of calls regarding you know tall grass, blight oh, type okay. things. You know, that, that's been. Um, you know, one of the things that's been a little bit more more typical okay. right now, but but I think that's just the timing of the year that we we do tend to see a lot of those types of concerns right now. Are there building requests and things coming in? That's been pretty pretty typical of each year, so not really much of a change there at this point. I have one more comment, um, Victor, on our downtown. Uh, Marina Committee. Mm -hmm. I've gotten a lot of good feedback oh. about people enjoying uh, whatever the games are yeah. and stuff like that. That's gone well. The only feedback I have gotten is the grass doesn't look great. Did you have you gotten that? I, yeah, we actually have a survey that we put on the people can now. There's like a, a, a QR codes. You can scan your phone at the park and take it takes you to a survey. Yeah. So grass is the one comments, but I know we know, that it, we know we can't solve that issue until we replace the grass. Is it just wore out, tore well, out? It's, it looks it's, chipped off. Is it on gravel? It's on grass. So we never put sod or soil in, and yeah. it's gravel. It's on gravel. So there's like lumps. Yeah, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It's like it was at the end of a derby or something. So, so if you go through and screw that out, it'll look so good. Other yeah. than that, yeah. nice job. Yeah, thank And you I think the picnic tables are appropriately placed despite one fella. Well, we really got five more coming in, so. Mm -hmm. huh? We got five more coming in that are on back order. So right. we'll, we'll talk about that. But yeah, I appreciate stuff. that comments. Yeah. Yep. I love seeing everybody down there. Yeah, like, that's my I 
get a you know buy a sandwich at the gas station and go sit down. Oh man, lunch. eat lunch down there. It's still yeah, it's really cool. Chess, you know, the cornhole. The you sailors know, are coming in. The little kids. It's uh, I was down there last night. It's just happening. It's yeah, probably happening tonight too with street music. So yeah, that's great. Good job. But we did hire a new parks director. Her name's Rachel Rune. So you'll see her around town. She'll come to the planning commission in eventually. So she comes from us from Comstock Township near Kalamazoo. We'll she worked work there for seven long. years. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see her. Like, oh, come on. Welcome <laughs> 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 the job description. All of the duties as a science yeah. might be the line of jobs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll just tell you what to do. We can be adjourned. Thank you. All right. Thank you.